Peter Shiveris, editor for Blitz. Uh, this is a World War II movie told from a child's perspective, largely. So how did Steve McQueen describe the film to you? Um, very much just like that. Um, I mean, he really talked a lot about London, a lot about the time, and but mainly about the relationship between mother and son and the emotional connection being the the kind of guiding uh light for this film and just everything needed to kind of serve that purpose. And also, you know, we kind of get to know London uh, through George's adventure and just, I'd constantly ask him like, so is that real? Is that real? And like every single moment in this film has been researched and, and like every character is a, you know, a representation of a real character for the time, if they, the, uh, Warden that takes in George and shows him around. Mickey Davies, the gang is kind of based on these real gigs that operated in that time. And so it's kind of just the authenticity was also something we really talked about a lot. And that kind of followed through every department, um, you know, sound, visual effects, everything was so precise. Mm hmm. I mean, not to get too Dickensian, but it, it feels like a tale of two cities, but it's one city and that's London. But it's like one is such um, an intimate story about this family and George, this boy who's trying to get home. And then obviously the larger, grander story of the Blitz and every night London's being attacked. So what was like cutting and um, balancing those two halves to make one cohesive story? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of... George is kind of the the driving force in terms of he's the one moving around, he's the one trying to get home. So that was, it was really important though to kind of have Rita kind of, um, I guess their stories needed to kind of mirror each other in a way and connect and especially emotionally. So finding ways to balance how much of George can we stay with um, and then how much, how long can we be away from each character essentially. But also, it's kind of a story of day and night, like night is terrifying essentially. And then daytime kind of gives you a little bit, little bit more space to kind of get to know the place and readers workplace and um, get a bit more of a portrait of a, a city kind of going about its business while dealing with, you know, essentially a, a horrible um, time at war and the terror of that. And also the fact that there was danger during the day, you know, buildings would collapse and, you know, after a night of bombing and it was like, there was really no safety. So it was kind of keeping attention during the daytime was also really important. So it's just this low level, hopefully low level anxiety throughout the whole movie, which kind of probably was, you know, if it represents a, a tenth of what it was like to live through that time, you know, we would achieve something because, you know, just the mm -hmm. thought of it would be terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing I really liked about the movie, how it's like, um, you see everyone just going about their day-to-day -day lives because they have to, right? Um, yeah. But you never know when danger was going to strike. And so what was it like finding the right point to, I guess, like cut to the attack or danger? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of, I guess, scripted that way in a sense, but we did we did work with like Andrew Whitehurst and VFX to those close-up bomb shots that kind of, there's, they're not quite... You know they're a little abstract they don't quite sit in a particular space or time they're they're kind of attached to everything there and and they also give you a really interesting sonic uh signature that you can kind of play with in in sound so it was it was just about really kind of creating a sense that at any moment anything could happen so it was, it was really the ex playing with expectation as much as it was like um and and hopefully kind of creating a, a sense that it could be any time, you know, like the first time we see Rita and George, they're kind of having a really lovely moment on the bed, kind of getting ready for bed or just hanging out. And then, you know, a siren goes off and things just go sideways and kind of trying to maintain that sense that things could go in any direction at any time is like really what we work really hard on. Mm hmm. And the film also has a lot of flashbacks to to show like, you know, uh, what these people like Rita and George were doing or, or just like the the scene in the the cafe, like that whole like jazz, like dance party before yeah. the attacks. Um, so what was like editing those sequences and having a contrast before? Uh, yeah, they were, they were much looser in, in terms of 
the way they were shot, they're stylistically quite different. And they also served a really different purpose. Like, I mean, a lot of flashbacks kind of give you a lot of information, whereas these flashbacks were really about emotion and just about representing what home was for George a lot, you know, them around the piano and singing and just the safety and the comfort there and the contrast to where he was when he was on the train and, and moving through London. So they kind of serve an interesting purpose in, in terms of they're not so much, you know, serving plot or narrative, but they're actually just serving the emotional kind of core of the movie. Uh, and then the, the dance club was really fun. I mean, that's one scene we worked I think we did more work on that, maybe than anything else. Kind of, we were still we still tweaked that in the mix, but, and we and that was the first thing we sat down and cut together. But we just wanted that to be full of life and full of joy and excitement, because you know also that for a few reasons, like we need to meet Marcus, George's dad, and give a little bit of context there. But we've just had you know a quite tragic um, moment on the train tracks and just to bring the audience, give the audience some life and some joy and some excitement uh, in a different way, you know, and to show, yeah, London as it, as it was before the Blitz as well. Mm -hmm. And I feel like um, having music, uh, it undercuts the tension of the moment, it makes you forget it for a, a second, like what you're actually watching, you know, is like a, a, like yeah. a nice moment. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And Steve loves the, the idea of like music as a way to kind of deal with trauma and bring people together. And I think, you know, there's a lot of singing in this film, like the people in the bomb shelter, show me the way to go home and the way, uh, yeah, sometimes words aren't enough and, you know, kind of music can, can do something for us uh, emotionally that, that you can't really get anywhere else. So Steve really likes to lean into that. And de definitely, I mean, the other jazz club later when uh, the Cafe de Paris that's that's a good example of trying to create a sense of a place and a time and be as accurate as possible because that is oh johnny was actually what they were playing when the bomb dropped in real life so every like every detail in there is so uh meticulously kind of put together and, and accounts from survivors and just just so there's so much uh, authenticity to those moments too mm -hmm. yeah and and obviously, if anyone didn't know, Saoirse Ronan can also sing. <laughs> she sang very well. The, the yeah, winter coat. What was it like uh, editing that scene? Um, I mean, that was all about emotion. Again, it's you know, George has just left, and we kind of we know what's happening with George, but Rita doesn't, and she's just missing him essentially. And that was that was all pre-recorded uh, with Saoirse and Nicholas Brattel, and. Tara Stetson wrote it with Steve. Um, and it's kind of, for Steve, it was based on a, a story that, well, it's based on a winter coat that it's kind of the only thing Steve has of his father's that after he passed away, that was kind of what, what he got, a winter coat. So it was, it was uh, very emo emotional on, you know, from conception and, um, yeah, it was just about really just trying to find the connection again. You, we brought George into that scene. He wasn't, that was kind of not structured that way in the script. So we brought George in. Also the Gerald shots, uh, the grandfather we picked up later and also kind of dropped into the scene just, just to bring them all into that moment and have Rita kind of, you know, really um, kind of thread, thread the emotional core of the movie, the family into into that one moment and have everyone together in that scene, even though everyone was in separate places, was was really crucial to kind of bringing it home as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, and well, there's there's uh, several shots of daisies throughout the film, brief shots. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming Steve was particular about the, the daisy shots. So so how how did what did you discuss about them and when to incorporate them and like the length of uh, them? Yeah, it's, it, it happens three times. Um, once at the beginning, and the, you know, it's Man Ray, it's a piece from Man Ray that we're using. So it's, it is surreal art in, in its uh, core. So it's, it's really symbolic and um, about creating space for the audience to kind of think about the bigger picture essentially and, and make connections that, you know, you can't sometimes make by being literal. Um, 
And that was really experimental in a sense of where we use it. We knew we wanted it. Steve knew he wanted it at the start. And then as we went on, we were like, okay, we have it at the start. We need, it needs to be more than that to, to kind of really, you know, be important. Um, so the end seemed like the most logical other place, <laughs> especially with George's, uh, George and Rita's conversation coming back on the bed, make a wish and just, I mean, hopefully leaving the audience, it's it's a pretty devastating film, I think, in a lot of ways. But to have a glimmer of hope at the end, just to have a little bit of hope and, and really to put put it in the audience's lap as well, like, you know, kind of ending with make a wish and just, just hopefully uh, reflecting on what you've seen and, and what's going on in the world right now and, and be kind of, you know, I guess it's good to get a reminder every now and then of, of what, you know, we all kind of have choices we can make. And, and... Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, Peter, it was great speaking with you. Thanks so much for your time. We'll see you back in a little bit. Yes, thank you.